Keeping pace with Greater Lafayette, this is Lafayette Live with Mike Piggott, Mary Meislewick, and Weather with Ron Rhodes. TV 18 News at Noon. Good afternoon. The commander of Operation Desert Storm says the Gulf War is going exactly as expected, and in some cases, better than expected. We found eight more mobile erector launchers in the same location. Uh, we are currently attacking those launchers, and we have confirmed, confirmed the destruction of three more of those mobile erected launchers, and we are continuing to attack the others, and I assure you we will attack them relentlessly until either we are prevented from attacking them any further by weather, or we have destroyed them all. So far, the fighting has been mostly limited to the air, but General Schwarzkopf says U.S. Uh, ships have disabled or destroyed three Iraqi patrol boats. And he says U.S. ground troops are repositioning for future action along the Kuwaiti border. General Schwarzkopf also says seven Allied planes have been lost since the start of the attack. He says three of the missing planes are American. The others are from Britain, Italy, and Kuwait. CNN reports today that Iraq is claiming to have captured some American pilots. A CNN reporter in Baghdad quotes an Iraqi official as saying reporters could meet with the captured pilots. The report contained no further details. Iraq's attack on Israel is threatening to turn the Persian Gulf War into a wider Middle East conflict. At least eight Scud missiles landed in Tel Aviv and elsewhere in Israel last night. An Israeli official says the weapons had conventional warheads and left at least 12 people injured. Another Scud missile was fired toward Saudi Arabia, but a U.S. Patriot interceptor missile knocked down the Iraqi weapon. Israeli Foreign Minister David Levy says the government still has not decided whether to respond to the attack. The prospect of is Israeli retaliation is prompting questions on whether Arab members of the anti-Iraq alliance will break the coalition. In Jordan, the military went on its highest alert since the 1967 Middle East War. A senior Jordanian military official says the country is sandwiched between Iraq and Israel, and they want to be ready in case of an Israeli retaliation. Doug Tunnell has more. <laughs> Dawn today, Amman was calm, but only just. The prospect of Israel using Jordanian airspace as a corridor to Iraq has Jordanians feeling more vulnerable than ever and more fearful that events could still run out of anyone's control. King Hussein's top priority is to stay out of war. As a pilot, the king has an intimate understanding of just how quickly attacking Israeli jets could see his kingdom as little more than the shortest distance between two points on the map, between Iraq and Israel. One message in mosques around Jordan today was that people here are not about to tolerate Israel's use of Jordanian airspace. There are calls for support for Iraq and appeals for Jordanians to stand behind their army at this time of great tension. In any air war that would involve Israel, the distances and the times are extremely short. From here in Amman, Jerusalem is only about 40 miles as the crow flies, the Iraqi border 140 miles in the other direction. Only a matter of seconds in the cockpit of a jet. Doug Tunnell, CBS News, Amman. Relatives of members of Lafayette's 209th Reserve Unit have spent several nerve-wracking nights glued to the television, but their friends have been, their fears have been calmed somewhat thanks to phone calls from their loved ones stationed in Saudi Arabia. Jill Dittmeyer reports. There was a different mood at this week's meeting of the 209th Support Group. Members no longer have to worry about going to war, and thanks to several phone calls from Saudi Arabia, they don't have to worry about the safety of their loved ones either. I was in bed trying to sleep. I'd been up all night. He called at 6.30, and I had been feeling so low and down, and when he called, it was just like this big weight lifted off of my chest. And he's in real good spirits. He said everybody was fine, that they had been let come out of their shelters. And Scott called this morning at 11 o'clock, which was just a little after daybreak over there. And he was really kind of concerned, you know, what was happening. But usually he don't know what's going on, but he did have a radio, he said. So he was listening to CNN. And so and we was watching what he was hearing, so it was pretty neat. He, could, he wasn't real worried about what was going on. Well, yesterday had been a real stressful day. I had begun to think I was going to have a nervous breakdown. But then when I called, he called, and I talked to him, and it was just like a relief. And while loved ones at home were scared during last night's bombings, the troops say they were relieved. They were just so glad that it was getting going and, you know, everything was going to get started. And they had played cards and just listened during the night. I said, well, did you hear the bombs and all or, you know, whatever? And she said, no, that was too far away, but they had heard the planes go out. 
And then all day today they had hurt them, you know, even more. So wherever they're at, they're close to an airfield. They know what they're there for and that they have things under control and not to worry about them, that they'll be safe. And my husband's been in the reserves a long time and I have all the confidence in the world in them, him and the soldiers. I know, I, I feel in my heart that they'll be okay. The feeling of relief was momentarily dashed when the support group heard the announcement of the attack on Israel. Members were told they could go home if they wanted, but most decided to stay and be together, sharing their thoughts and hope for a safe return of their loved ones. Jill Dittmeyer, TV18 News. After a loud and disorganized rally on the Purdue campus two nights ago, it was a much smaller, quieter crowd that showed up last night. About a dozen anti-war activists staged a silent candlelight protest on the Memorial Mall to express what they called a patriotic message. We are opposing this war because we feel it's not in the best interest of our country to be in this war. And that's patriotism, to, to, to do what you think is in the best interest of your country. Uh, there's an old adage, my country right or wrong, and that's very seldom completed. The complete thing is, my country right or wrong, if wrong, if right to protect her, if wrong to correct her, and we feel that perhaps our country might need some correcting right now, and that's what we're out here doing. Nearby, about 40 pro-war demonstrators unfurled an American flag and complained about the anti-war slogans that have shown up on buildings around campus. It really saddens my heart to see the campus written all over, spray painted. You know, it's fine to have an opinion, but I think expressing it this way is the wrong thing to do. You know, it's going to cause a lot of high tension. It's already high. It's just not necessary at all, and I think they're defeating their own purpose. So what is your message out here tonight? Our message is to support the Operation Desert Storm that's going on right now and to show that, you know, we're in the war now. You know, we ought to give the war effort support and let those troops know that we are behind them and aren't going to look down at them for what they're doing. Coming up, we'll have war reaction from Grissom Air Force Base, along with the thoughts of Indiana Senator Richard Luger. Plus, we'll follow up on a two-day on a two-hotel robbery that may be connected with the murder of a Brixton minister, and police have released drawings of the possible suspect. A message from Sweeney, Pfeiffer, and Blackburn. If you've been injured in an accident caused by another, you may be entitled to more than just the payment of your medical expenses. Oftentimes, additional payments for pain and suffering, loss of income while you're recovering, and an award for the permanent effects of your injury are proper. Call Sweeney, Piper, and Blackburn now for a full and complete review of your claim before you accept any settlement. Remember, there is no fee unless we make a recovery for you. Sweeney, Piper, and Blackburn, attorneys for injured people. H&R Block can get you every possible dollar that you have coming. America's tax team wants to save you money on your taxes. We are trained to find every credit and every deduction that the tax law allows. Income taxes are all we do. We're here whenever you need us. I will find you the maximum refund that you're entitled to. We're going to take the worry out of your tax return. The tax team stands behind its work. No wonder more people choose Block to get their tax returns done right. We're America's tax team. Put us to work for you. Start with 100% sirloin, process it by not squeezing out the natural juices, and prepare the patties and flour to seal in those juices. Then you get this, the best your money can buy. I should know, I'm Jack Ayrton, owner of the Triple X Restaurant. This is a Dwayne Purvis All-American, a unique sandwich from a unique restaurant. The drive-in concept, this is where it all started, at the Triple X Restaurant since 1929, on the hill but on the level, in West Lafayette. Come on in. To sell a house, it takes more than a handshake, it takes experience. Remax Sales Associates average twice the experience of other full-time real estate agents. To sell a home, it takes expertise. Remax Associates are North America's top producers, outselling the average three to one. To sell your home, do what it takes. Step up to Remax. Congratulations on your new home. Portions of Lafayette Live are sponsored by the Surplus Store and Exchange and by the Triple X Restaurant. A Grissom Air Force Base spokesman says feelings and emotions at the base are running high in support of the President and Allied forces in the Persian Gulf. 
Lieutenant Richard Sater says feelings of patriotism are rivaled only by deep concern for comrades in the Middle East. He says the best way Hoosiers can help airmen and other military personnel in the Gulf is by continuing to send packages, letters, and to pray. Indiana Congressman Lee Hamilton and Senator Richard Luger say there's much more to resolving the Middle East conflict than defeating Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein. Representative Hamilton says the U.S. needs to focus more attention on how to resolve Arab-Israeli conflicts and Mideast economic well-being, issues that will still be present after the war ends. Senator Luger says now that Israel has been brought into the war, that country needs to remain patient. The, the whole idea of the coalition uh, holding together uh, ha has been based on the fact that a holy war, religious war, would not occur. And the Israelis, in fairness, have been extraordinarily cooperative given their proximity to the action and the danger to their people. But I think the politics of the thing is clear to all parties. Luger also says after combat is over, U.S. forces will have a major hand in rebuilding Kuwait. Lebanon police have found a black van allegedly used as a getaway vehicle by the suspects in two hotel robberies. The first was reported at the Dollar Inn on Lafayette's east side around 10 o'clock Wednesday night. About an hour and a half later, a similar robbery occurred at Lebanon's Holiday Inn, where the suspects were seen fleeing in the stolen van. A citizen spotted the van the next day in the parking lot of a Lebanon apartment complex. Well, Lebanon police say the man is described as his, in his late 20s, about 5 feet 8 inches tall, with sandy brown hair and a mustache. He wore a light brown leather jacket and blue jeans and displayed a small stainless steel handgun. Lebanon police say he may have had two accomplices. Now, Tippecanoe County police have released two drawings. One man is described as 33-year-olds with black-gray hair, wearing blue jeans and a blue jean coat. The other is described as 28 years old with brown hair wearing a tan coat and blue jeans. Tippecanoe County Police say both displayed a handgun. Police also believe the robbers may have committed a murder just before midnight Thursday morning at the I-65 Rest Park north of Lebanon. The victim, 39-year-old William Radcliffe of rural Brookston, was shot in the head during an apparent robbery. Radcliffe served as pastor of the Badger Grove Community Baptist Church. Ron says that the sun will show its face this afternoon. That's good news. He'll be in with today's forecast and a look ahead to the weekend when we come back. And later, Dr. Bob Lanier will talk about how much exercise pregnant women should get. Every day on my job, I'm able to give comfort, to teach, to give reassurance, to help in the healing process. What more could one ask? Being a nurse gives me a chance to make a difference in another human being's life. This message courtesy of St. Elizabeth Hospital, Lafayette. Our New Year's resolution, making it easy for anyone to buy a new car this month. Making it easy with no payment till April at all Bob Roman dealerships. Honda, Toyota, Lincoln Mercury, Jeep Eagle, Subaru, Hyundai, and Mitsubishi. Making it easy with a free customer care package worth over $600. We're making it easy at all Bob Roman dealerships in Lafayette. Happy new car! Lattic herbicide is effective on a wide range of broadleaf weeds. But what's most important is that it's the gentlest post-emergence broadleaf herbicide you can buy. Which means there's one thing that Lattic has no effect on. Lattic from BASF. It's tough on weeds, but it's gentle on corn. Lattic is a restricted-use pesticide. Well, the news has certainly been gloomy, but I'll tell you what, today the weather's bright. Yes, it is. The sunshine came out about an hour and a half ago, and it should stay, too. That's the good news, because the sun will be hanging around at least till the end of the afternoon. Well, then clouds roll in later on. We'll talk about that rain in a minute. Temperature 29 degrees, humidity 75 percent. The winds are from the northwest. They'll be shifting to the southwest later on today, and the river level is falling as well. 1603, no precipitation recorded yet today. Don't expect any unless we have some later tonight. 
Normally 34 and 18, the record set in 1952, and of course in 1977, a bitter cold winter. The weather trivia question, think in terms of three-dimensional as far as the dice are concerned, and snowflakes as in two-dimensional. Think of them as flat. Well, let's say die instead of dies. And what do snowflakes and a die have in common? Think uh, geometrically. Temperatures from across the area are fairly varied. 10 degrees separating South Bend and Evansville. 35 degrees. We will be at that temperature later on today. Probably exceed that temperature as well. We'll probably reach the upper 30s. Temperature in Indianapolis, 32. And it's a bit cooler, below 30 degrees in both Lafayette and also Fort Wayne. The satellite picture shows the clouds, but the high pressure system will be building in. A lot of strong storms being developed by the low pressure cell, which will be the main component of our precipitation later on this weekend, a chance for rain tomorrow, and that will turn to snow tomorrow night. Well, the cold front brought the cloud cover. There's that high pressure cell and a kind of a pump. You got the counterclockwise flow of the low, the clockwise flow of the high, bringing the precipitation. And there is some precipitation showing up on the latest radar scan in central Kentucky. You see a little bit of rainfall in and around the Bowling Green area and farther to the north, just the snowfall that will stay to the north as well. There's the cold front and the low pressure cell. This is tomorrow around the noontime hour. We probably won't see any rain until later on tomorrow afternoon. It depends upon how fast this low pressure cell moves, but it is churning up the moisture into the Ohio Valley. As this cold front drapes on through on Sunday, however, it will turn over from rain to snow. Temperatures close to 40 degrees today. Benny Bird, you like this kind of weather. You love the sun. Went up, flew up in the sky and gave him a big hug. As we look at the forecast, Benny told you, partly cloudy skies today, or partly sunny rather, I'm sorry. High of around 38, wind shifting to the southwest by tonight and fairly strong too, 10 to 15 miles an hour. We have gusts right now recorded over 20 miles an hour. And then into Wednesday, or rather into Saturday, we're going to see the chance for snow. Uh, I mean rain, I'm sorry, late afternoon light rain. It'll turn over to snow by Sunday. And snow is the main component of the weather trivia question. Do you know? A necessary component to the Yahtzee game. No, 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 no. <laughs> it has six sides. Six sides, that's okay, right. Okay, thanks, Ron. Well, coming up, another shuttle will carry a Chicks in Space project. We'll explain right after this. Save like never before during the gigantic January savings days at Twin City Dodge. We've got a great selection of conversion vans from Elk and Ram Coach, all priced to sell, with $1,750 rebates on all 90 conversion vans and $750 rebates on all 91s. Nothing's better for the long cross-country trip or short john around town than a classy new conversion van from Twin City Dodge Chrysler Plymouth. The Bluffs, Lafayette's distinctive apartment community. I chose this lovely one-bedroom, unfurnished apartment in order to have my things around me while enjoying the excellent features that come with it, especially the lovely kitchen and dining area. I enjoy an active lifestyle, and the Bluffs offer swimming, jogging, tennis, and year-round health spa facilities. Furnished apartments are available. It's like living in your own private park, south of downtown on 4th Street. Convenient to banks, Purdue, and shopping. One, two, three, five! <laughs> Join New Tone in January and get a free pair of Reebok Cross Trainer shoes. Come on, you can do it. Starting this Friday, it will happen only once. You want a real deal? You want quality merchandise at real deal prices? Don't forget, only once. No phony prices, no phony gimmicks. Men's clothing, women's clothing, children's clothing, and gifts. When it's over, it's over forever. Stex, going out of business sale. One time only. Stex, under the portico on Main Street in Crawfordsville. It starts this Friday. Portions of Lafayette Live are sponsored by the Bob Rorman Auto Dealerships and by the wall covering stop and frame joint. In March of 1989, the Space Shuttle Discovery contained a Purdue project known as Chicks in Space. The project used fertilized chicken embryos to test the effects of zero gravity on embryonic development. Well, Purdue is getting ready to move into another phase of uh, Chicks in Space. Four more experiments are scheduled to fly on a shuttle mission beginning in the fall of 1992. Well, joining us with more on the project is the principal investigator, Dr. Ron Hollinger. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you, Mary. Very briefly, explain the success 
of uh, part one, phase one of chicks in space? Quite unanticipated, we found that the chicks did not develop if they were younger. The older ones, that is the older embryos, did develop and survive quite normally by most all parameters. But the younger ones did not, and that's a, quite a significant result. Tell, tell us the importance of that. It means that the whole developmental period cannot be conducted under zero gravity, apparently. So what, what happens next, then? What is the next phase of, of this particular investigation? Phase two will attempt to repeat the project so that we can confirm those results, make sure they're not spurious results resulting from something other than hypogravity. We'll also include some chicks of the older group to serve as a control, and that would be a positive control for development. Now, you're looking at the chicks now, but what, what do you hope to get out of this experiment what, and apply it to human human uh, experiment? Well, it's very fundamental research, initially conceived as a very basic project, which is now quite applied. That is, if we find problems with that result, it's directly applicable to development of us in space in a long-term habitation, but also in development of high-quality protein, like in the chick, and to replicate that in the space environment. Is there any concern about human reproduction in space as yes, part of this? Yes, uh, by a direct extension of this, if it's not possible for creatures that are very similar to us in our normal development, if it's not possible for them to develop in space, then if we would assume that there might be problems in human development. You're looking for sponsors for this. Uh, obviously, Kentucky Fried Chicken benefited tremendously, I think, from some of the publicity that they received, but what, what about, what, what might other companies, what kind of involvements might they have? Well, both Kentucky Fried Chicken and Purdue were very much interested in the basic research of that. It's true that there's a tremendous harvest of public interest mm -hmm. in it and advertising. Um, we're interested in approaching the producing uh, industry, those who are directly involved in poultry. We're also interested in approaching industries like the pharmaceutical companies that might be interested in developing um, drugs that would affect motion sickness, that would be interested in the basic development of the inner ear where the, apparently the control for motion sickness is found, and also the, uh, those that are interested in bone and bone development. So there's some very fundamental questions that can be addressed using this model. Dr. Ron Hollinger, good luck with your project. Thank you very much. Thank you for being with Thanks us Thanks for today. having me. We'll be right back. This way to get rid of corns is dangerous. But Dr. Scholl's corn removers are clinically proven safe and effective. Within five applications, the painful corn will be replaced with new, softer skin. We guarantee it. Dr. Scholl's corn removers. If you're interested in acquiring fine art, stop at the Frame Joint and Gallery. Our gallery offers wall after wall of fine art by internationally acclaimed artists such as P. Buckley Moss and James Warline. We also carry works by several Indiana artists, including Steve and Mark Polomchek and Wilbur Meese. And our certified picture framers can create the perfect frame in which to display your artwork or personal mementos. The Frame Joint and Gallery, we guarantee excellent service and quality at a very fair price. Kokomo Auto World's $2 million tax liquidation sale is going on now with the largest savings of the year on every Ford, Honda, Lincoln, Mercury, and Toyota in stock. Whether you want to own or lease, now's the time, and Kokomo Auto World's the place to get the best roulettes, including the all-new 91 Ford Explorer, Honda Accord Wagon, Mercury Capri Convertible, and Toyota Tercel. You won't pay factory lists. You won't pay extra for accessories you don't want, and there's no additional dealer profit on the sticker. So hurry in now to Kokomo Auto World, just west of 31 on South La Fountain, South Kokomo. If you love that just open freshness of mountain-grown Folgers, now you can love it even longer. Introducing the Folgers Freshness Pack. Ground roast Folgers that stays fresh longer because our new bottle seals up tighter. So the rich aroma of our mountain-grown beans stays fresh and irresistible. So you can be too. The best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. The new Folgers Freshness Pack. You're expecting a baby, so can you keep up the same exercise program as before you got pregnant? Well, it all depends, says Dr. Bob Lanier in today's 60-second house call. How much exercise is too much for a pregnant woman? Well, it's a hot issue these days. Some new studies suggest that too much exercise could actually do harm. Reason? The placental blood supply seems to suffer if the exercise is too vigorous. 
pregnancy is not the time to start a new aerobic training program or intensify one that's already started. Experts say if a woman has not already been used to aerobic exercise, she should probably do nothing more vigorous than walking. Women who are used to competing should probably be content to take time off. That's what world-class runner Mary Decker Slaney had to do. And I'm having to cut back to running half a mile at a time and walking. And, but that's one of the things that you know, I describe as listening to your body. A good rule of thumb is not to push yourself to a heart rate of more than 120 to 140. The other important period is the cool down period. It's the riskiest for the baby, so take your time and cool down slowly and gently. I'm Dr. Bob Lanier. 60 Second House Call is sponsored by Home Hospital. Did you take a lot of notes there? I did take a lot of notes. I guess I better clear something <laughs> up. I'm not just gaining weight. I am expecting a baby in June, so in June you probably won't see me for a couple of weeks. Congratulations, Mary. Thank you. And we'll be right back with some thoughts from the President. I've seen the OptiFast program help caregivers, like Gail, learn how to help themselves. I don't think I'm ever going to be the perfect, you know, American beauty or whatever, but that's okay with me because I don't, that's not my goal. Um, just being healthier and, and living longer and enjoying life is really what, what's going to happen for me, you know, and I know that because it's happening now and it's just going to get better. OptiFast is a service of home hospital. Dial 449-5178. Lafayette Bank and Trust's first president was William Wallace, who had already made his impression on the community. In 1875, as engineer in the construction of the Reservoir and Columbian Park, he used a horse-drawn plow to create the park's lagoon in the shape of the letter G, honoring then-Mayor Elias Glick. Wallace Avenue continues to act as a reminder of this prominent business and civic leader. Lafayette Bank and Trust, making its impression on the community since 1899. The Surplus Store and Exchange is Lafayette's most unique department store. Choose from over 1,800 rings on display, not to mention the gold chains, bracelets, earrings, and pendants. For the more discriminating customer, we have two full-time goldsmiths for custom designing, jewelry repair, and restoration. Lafayette's only GIA graduate gemologist in residence, Jeff Birk, is available to assist with your precious stone needs. We are proud to be Lafayette's most complete jewelry store. I'm Dan Virk. For a truly unique experience, we invite you to visit the Surplus Store and Exchange at the corner of 18th and Main Streets. President Bush says the war against Iraq will take some time to complete and that the nation must be realistic about the cost. The president made the remarks at a news conference that just concluded moments ago. Realistic. There will be losses. Uh, there will be obstacles along the way. And war is never cheap or easy. And I say this only because I am somewhat concerned about the initial euphoria in uh, some of the reports uh, and reactions to the first day's developments. No one should... The Bush said no one should question the ultimate success because, in his words, we will prevail. He added the war will not end apart from a total fulfillment of U.S. objectives. Well, that's our report for now. CBS will continue coverage, at least for a while this afternoon, of the situation in the Persian Gulf, and uh, involve some, that coverage will involve some analysis of the presidential news conference that was just held. We'll join them in progress. Have a good afternoon. We'll see you on Monday. So long. Bye-bye.